Now let's continue with the previous uh, video on Laplace. So let's consider an example here. So example is to model a simple pendulum. So so what we have in simple pendulum we have his mean position here okay and a string is connected to a ball with mass m and due to gravity it has some weight that is represented by g and it makes some theta with the mean position and this is um, applied torque <coughs> the length uh, of this string is actually represented by l and so uh, what we have to do we have to find theta of t here and also theta of s so let's solve this problem so if you look at this problem so uh, for this problem we have to use newton's law but here we have to use the newton's second law for rotation and as you know that um, Newton's second law says that summation of torque is equal to inertia time rotational acceleration so this is the basic formula that we use to solve this problem now uh, for this one the main idea is uh, we have applied torque that is represented by Tf and then we have um, we have inertia of the system so now we know that uh, so <coughs> so if you know that uh, we can write uh, inertia theta dot double dot is equal to this is a cross product between the uh, this force and the moment arm so if you know that we can write it mg cross mo multiplication with um, length l so due to cross product so if you know that we can write it by mgl so we use sine and theta with it so this is due to the cross model so uh, because uh, this inertia is equal to this thing and plus we have applied um, uh, what you say uh, this is the with minus sign and we have applied torque so these are the torques and this is the inertia on the other hand and uh, let me rewrite it again on so look here we have summation of torque is equal to inertia double dot all right now look here for inertia of torque because this pendulum has a force that is weight that is equal to mg and we have applied torque tf so in that case we have a torque tf now minus because this will uh, resist the movement and resistance is based on this length which is moment arm okay becomes moment arm and the force so it becomes minus mg cross border or l that is equal to i double theta okay now if we apply the formula it becomes tf minus mg l sine of theta so similarly for inertia as we know that uh, there's a relation between inertia and uh, uh, linear displacement uh, moment of form can be written as uh, because we can know that inertia is equal to m elsewhere so this is the formula when plug in to this equation it becomes tf minus mgl sine of theta is equal to m elsewhere theta double down now this is the equation we are getting so if we rewrite the equation we can write it as tf is equal to ml square theta double dot plus mgl sine theta so this is a nonlinear equation why it is nonlinear because you have a sine theta this is a nonlinear term so uh, the variable is a in 
a function of a nonlinear. So, this is a nonlinear equation. Okay. So, this is a nonlinear equation. And nonlinear it is due to sine of theta. So, now the next thing, uh, if we do a little uh, manipulation, we can rewrite this as. Um, if I go to next page. So, I rewrite the equation as m l square I take the common of m l square it becomes theta double dot plus g by l sin of theta equal to T f. So, this is the model we are getting for a simple pendulum. Now, the next thing is uh, for solving. So, you know that Laplace transform is actually uh, solve the differential equation that are ordinary differential equation. So, in that case we have to apply it, we have to linearize this equation linearization of simple pendulum. How we do that? Um, uh, if you know the Taylor series, Taylor series says that you, uh, if you have a nonlinear function that can be equal to at the point where you want to linearize that is x naught plus derivative of that function okay, and put uh, x equal to x naught times x minus x naught plus so on. This is a Taylor series. This is the series that we will use to solve the uh, nonlinear equations, but uh, we we didn't we just consider equation till here because after that we again become scared, so it is again become nonlinear. So, uh, if you know that uh, in equation simple pendulum equation we have nonlinear term that is sin theta, so we apply uh, this term on sin theta, and we assume here is um, theta is nearly equal to 0 okay for with the assumption that um, theta is uh, nearly equal to 0. So, means that we are uh, perturbing our simple pendulum very near to the mean. So, this uh, sin equation can be approximated as using this formula sin of 0 plus derivative of sin theta that is cos theta and put theta equal to 0 here and theta minus 0. Okay. So, when we solve this sin theta is nearly equal to 0 plus when you put the value of cos theta as 1. So, it becomes theta. So, this implies that for generalization purpose sin theta for a small theta value is equal to theta. When we plug in this we get a linear equation. Now, linearized equation of simple pendulum. That becomes um, m l square, we have theta double dot plus g by l instead of sin theta we put theta here is equal to t f. So, we can rewrite it into as theta double dot plus g by l theta is equal to t f divided by m l square. So, this is the equation we are getting. Now, the uh, question we have to ask is to find theta of t and uh, theta of s. So, how we solve this? We take uh, we, uh, we apply the Laplace term. Uh, apply Laplace on both sides. Now, what we get here? So, Laplace of theta double dot plus g by l theta and uh, Laplace of Tf divided by m l square. So when we do that it becomes uh, s square 
theta of s minus s times theta of 0 and minus uh, theta dot of 0 similarly plus v by l theta of s is equal to tf of s divided by m l square now this is the equation we are getting now um, we can uh, rewrite it as uh, if we uh, take theta of s common it becomes s square plus g by l ok and take all other uh, other terms these uh, initial condition on the other side so it becomes t f of s where m l square then we have a plus sign here it becomes s theta of 0 plus theta dot 0 dot so that represents the initial condition so um, now if i want to find out theta of s so in that case it becomes t f of s whole divided by m l square times s square plus g by l Okay. Similarly, um, if we um, divide it here, this is the initial condition part that becomes s square plus g by l. So, this is theta of s. So, this is your transfer function this part is the due to the initial conditions. Now, <coughs> if we assume that um, uh, if we want to calculate uh, the um, now next step is to calculate phi of t. How we do that? We take the inverse Laplace. For inverse Laplace, we do use a property and property says that um, uh, you know, um, property says that you have s divided by s square plus omega square it can be equal to cos of omega t so we take uh, both separately for example if we look at um, for uh, initial response if we go to next one and I just uh, rewrite the equation so that uh, it's easy to apply the inverse Laplace tf of s divided by m l square s square plus g by l <coughs> now the plus we have the initial condition that is theta dot plus theta dot we have s square plus g by l now if we want uh, so there are two parts here this is for transfer function force response and this is initial condition response now if you look at initial condition response first for initial condition response we have theta dot plus divided by s square plus g by l now we can We can just uh, rewrite it as uh, as theta dot divided by s square plus g by l plus theta dot s square plus g by l. Okay. So from here, uh, if we apply the um, what you say property that. Uh, I discussed that uh, s divided by 
s square plus omega square is actually equal to cos of omega t okay if i do that so in that case uh, we have a solution for the initial condition is theta naught cos of under root uh, g by l t okay so similarly for next one is um, there's no s on top so in that case it becomes sine if i'm not wrong so for sine sine of uh, theta dot sine of g by l under root t okay so this is the solution we are getting due to the initial conditions now if we um, actually this give us some uh, similarly if we look at um, force response for force response we have phi of s that is equal to t f of s divided by m l square and s square plus g by l so we have to put the different input and uh, then we can easily solve the force response okay so it depends upon the input you are uh, providing and you can calculate the phi of t for that particular force response so uh, this is uh, what we do when we solve a simple pendulum so i will stop here and we'll continue next video